Why, hi there, I'm Ron Checkett, and today on Retro Sports Network, I'm going to show you how I do game prep for a football game. Inevitably, any replay I do, there is prep work involved. You just can't go into it cold. But like baseball, for instance, a day-to-day -day thing, you mostly know the teams. You make sure that a few things are set, and then you try to pick up from when the computer left off for you. But for football, it's a little bit different because the game's been a lot more. The viewership is just a touch more. And you want to make sure that you're playing the best way, the right way. So let me walk you through it. I'm going to prep it for taping this on Tuesday the 20th. And today we're going to prep for Dallas at Houston. Second place in the AFL West versus uh, a tie for first in the AFL East. Uh, Dallas comes into this one game behind Los Angeles. And Houston and Buffalo are tied at. 4-0 and oh, as we start our week six games. So the first thing, I'll show you the first thing I do in a moment. Okay, I know all of these are right, but sometimes I don't necessarily do all the uh, names and graphics at once. It's kind of a case of I'll do it when I need to. So let me make sure that I have Dallas and Houston set for graphics and colors. Okay, Dallas, it says the Texans, which is right. The colors are default. They played the Cotton Bowl. That is correct. Houston. I guess they play at Jepson Stadium, not Rice Stadium. But the Oilers are there. We had them last week. Um, I don't touch any of the penalties or the time zones or the fonts. Let me see if Jepson Field is here. It is. Or Jeppinson. There's two different stadiums. So I gotta actually fix that. So I make sure the home park is correct. And in the case of the Oilers, it's Jeppinson Stadium, not Rice Stadium. Okay, then I go to graphics and stuff. I want to make sure that I have logos and fields correct. So Dallas, yep, that's the helmet. If I wanted to change it to, there's my list of helmets. And so th those are my helmets. So the logo is there. I use the horizontal fields. I see too. It's never going to snow in Dallas. So my dry field is set and my rain field is set. So any game I play at the Cotton Bowl with doubt the Texans is going to be all set for the year. Then I click on Houston. Same thing. It's never going to snow in Houston. It's not showing you what field to use. But obviously, I've selected the fields. They are what I think they should be. And that's all set. And for the logo, boom, boom. There's your generic Houston Oilers helmet from 1960. So I know as far as the visual presentation is concerned, that things are right you see pictures by the players so everything that you would necessarily see in a broadcast is set and so as far as the back end or the front end of what you see it's good now in a moment i'll show you how i look to do more prep from here i go to pro football reference and i call up the houston oilers page because i want to be able to see outside of some of the basic things that trained at the University of Houston, if you care. Bud Adams was the owner. Uh, Lou Rimkis was the coach. It tells me how good their offense was. They were second in the AFL. Their defense was second in the AFL. Um, and their expected record should have been pretty much 9-5. and five. The next thing I look at is their quarterback, and I know it's George Blanda. I look at his record, how many times he threw the ball over. Well, he started 11 games, so I should throw about 30, 33 passes. I want to try to make sure that I have the ratios right. Uh, AFL, obviously, is a pass-happy league. was right from the get-go, 
and I want to make sure that it, when I play the game that I do the best job that I can to make sure I mean, that it's at least authentic. may not be accurate, but at least authentic. I look at my running backs. I have Dave Smith and Billy Cannon. You can see them about halfway down the page. First thing I look at here is rushing attempts per game. I want to make sure I get enough running plays in. And so you look down at the bottom, it tells me that I should run the ball about 32 times a game. And Dave Smith and Billy Cannon, who you can see that are kind of highlighted already in purple, get about 21 of those 32 carries. It's not a lot. They only had about 10, 11 carries a game. You can't sit there and pound the football with them. Uh, so Charlie Tolar and Doug Klein are my other two running backs. And I want to make sure that they get, let me see, for about seven. So 22 and seven. That's about 29 carries. Uh, is George Blaine going to get a carry? He may not. Yeah, no, actually, he'll get about one. And if it's a blowout, I might give Ken Hall a couple carries. But pretty much, this was a pass first team that could run the football. The next thing I look at, who are my receivers? Smith and Cannon are going to get about one or two passes out of the backfield a game. My targets are going to be Bill Grauman, who has 72 pass completions, and that's a lot for the AFL in 1960. Johnny Carson, who's my tight end, and Charlie Hennigan, who's my other wide receiver, or split in. So the three of them, let's see, 14. But Charlie's going to get about four catches a game. Carson about two to three catches a game. And Grauman's going to get about five. So I know right then and there about what I should be shooting for with the rushes for, and the passes. But I want to make sure that my rushers are pretty much set. So Smith and Cannon, 22 carries is what I should be shooting for. And if I can run the ball 30 times, I should be in good shape. Now, I'm going to, do I want to get a story about a player? Well, let's take a look at Dave Smith. You can tell, I know from here that he was drafted by Green Bay in the 1959 draft, but didn't really stay. He was an All-Pro once. He's still alive today, 82. And at a glance, I can get his career stats. I know from this that 1960 was his big year. He really was kind of a backup running back after that. He played in all 14 games, but when you only have 56 and 50 yard carries per season, you aren't the primary back. So I know that he's not really a prospective Hall of Famer, but it's always good to see how many touches, uh, where they went to school, if that's something I want to talk about, or, or what. But in 1960, he was the primary back, and you can see by that plus sign by that 1960, he was a first-team All-Pro. Okay, next thing I'm going to look at is Dallas. I get the real life record. They were 8 and 6. Hank Stram was the coach. You know all about Hank Stram. I don't need to do anything about that. Lamar Hunt was from Dallas. Uh, and they played at the Cotton Bowl. And they trained in Roswell, which I believe someone commented on before, at the New Mexico Military Institute. Okay, same thing. I look at the quarterback. Cotton Davidson is their quarterback. He's going to start 12 of the games. They threw the ball 435 times in 14 games. So that's about 30, 35 passes a game. So I look at Cotton Davidson. I want to make sure that I have information on him. He's actually still alive. How about that? Uh, played in Gatesville, Texas. Did not... Uh, Went to Baylor for college and was drafted by the Colts fifth overall in 1954 and did nothing. Started one game in different seasons for the Colts. Isn't that exciting? So I take a look. Yeah, he was a quarterback in 1960, a good quarterback in 61, traded to Oakland in 62. It's because the... Uh, Texans got Lenny and Len Dawson and then spent the last parts of his career with Oakland but still a good quarterback he threw for 20 almost 2500 yards three times 
60, 61, and 64. He's going to move the football. In fact, he threw for almost 2,500 yards at Oakland in 1964, only starting half the games. So I know what kind of offense they're going to play. It's going to be a, a throwing first offense. Now I look at my how many times am I going to run the ball? About 33 times a game. Abner Haynes is their primary running back, a tremendous running back, and all pro his first year, ran for 875 yards. Uh, he's going to get about 12 or 11 carries. Jack Spikes and Johnny Robinson are going to get me 15 between the two, so it really is a three-headed monster out there. But Robinson is also a receiver. You take a look, you can see how Hank Stram uses receivers. Abner Haynes is going to be thrown to a lot out of the backfield. He's a short gainer from there. So screen plays. I know I'm going to run a bunch of those or passes in the flat. Johnny Robinson is going to be one receiver. And I can use him as a flanker. I can use him out, do some end of rounds and some reverses with him. Uh, let's see, what else? Jack Spikes again. He's also their kicker. That may or may not be a good thing. He's a fullback. He's going to get me about eight carries, so usually about two carries a quarter. My other receiver is Chris Burford. He is the end, and he will get about uh, 16 or 14, 28, about three catches a game as well. And Max Boyden, or Boydston, has a bunch of catches as well. So I know that I'm going to have about 15 completed passes out of that bunch. Who's my tight end? Bob Bryant, who's not going to get me much. Okay, so that's for a look at the offense. I look at the names. There's nothing there that's kind of tricky to pronounce. Um, and now I go look at the box score. All right, so I look at the week six box score. It tells me who won the game. Which was the Oilers 20 to 10. Where the game was played, which was Houston. The scoring in the game, Dallas actually cut it to within seven in the second quarter. Doesn't give me times of things, of course. Uh, tells me the weather. If I wanted to play with that, that really doesn't matter. This is what I'm looking for. How many times did they pass the ball? Who got the most carries? How are they distributed? And who made the most catches? I don't go by this verbatim, of course, but it does help me figure out what I should be doing with these offenses. Abner Haynes got 12 carries and made four catches. Jack Spikes, seven carries for 34 yards. Uh, for Houston, I'm looking down. I see what George Blanda did. Neither one of the quarterbacks said he did a good game. Ken Hall, Billy Cannon, and Dave Smith pretty much split all the runs. Houston actually ran it a bunch. They ran it 20, 34 times. And Bill Grauman had 10 catches for 140 yards. So I know that that should be my primary target. Okay, and so that's pretty much the prep work I do for a game. I don't usually take notes on this, but it's a case of, okay, familiarize myself with who got the most touches, who was successful, and what should I be planning? Because remember, in my games, I play both the offenses. So it's my job to know kind of what they did and what to expect before I actually get into the game. It's not foolproof. Um, but on the other hand, I try to, it gives me a good sense of to give you the most accurate or authentic broadcast that I can. And so there you go. That's how I prep for a game. Hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, please ask. I'm Ron Chuckett for Retro Sports Network. We'll talk to you the next time.